Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for lending me your ear. Today, I want to talk about when you're in a presentation, how do you position your value and how do you do it with your product or service and how do you move the client to understand what to value in your product or service? Let me explain. There's four ways to position any type of variable or aspect of the product you have and position it with value. Let me give you the four strategies and I'll explain as I go through this. Listen carefully. If you implement these strategies during your presentation, you will notice that clients will begin to see the value that you're offering. Let me give you the first strategy. Sometimes when we're presenting a product, we need to insert, that's the key word, insert something the client has not thought about. So keep in mind that when you're presenting a certain product, sometimes the client hasn't really thought about why they might want to use it or how they might want to use it. So for example, let's say you're buying a laptop and let's say you're considering your basic laptop, not really think about it, you just want a good processor, big screen size, you're good. But maybe the person travels a lot. So what you need to insert is Question like this, Mr. Client, do you travel a lot? They say, yes. How often do you travel? Quite frequently. And then you say, well, maybe battery size and weight should be a consideration as part of your decision-making process. The customer goes, hmm, never really considered battery size or battery weight as part of the equation for making a decision. This is an example of inserting something that the customer has not thought about. Next strategy, number two, highlight a certain aspect of your product or service that you offer. Now, this is just really putting an emphasis on something that you consider important. Maybe the customer may not see it as important, but you wanna highlight something like, did you notice that this product also comes with this? Do you know that we offer this as a warranty? Again, that's a way of highlighting value, strategy number two. Let's move on to strategy number three. Now, sometimes the customer does value something, but in their priority stack, in other words, how they prioritize what they value the most, maybe this feature or aspect of your product is, let's say, number three or four. So, for example, let's go back to the battery example with the computer. Maybe the customer doesn't see battery as a big deal. They like the fact that it weighs less, but it's not a big deal. So, in other words, screen size, processor, storage, and then maybe battery. Battery is number four. So, how do you elevate the importance of battery? Well, you can say something like this, Mr. Customer, I understand that processing power is important, screen size is also important, and weight overall is important, but have you considered battery life? If you're on a plane traveling a lot, sometimes you don't have access to power, so having a battery that lasts longer than other typical batteries is something you may want to elevate in terms of your priorities. So the customer goes, you know what, you're right, I do travel a lot, and so screen size is important. Again, processor, processing and storage is important, but I really need to consider battery. And if you have a better battery, for example, in this case, than your competitor, in other words, it has a longer lifetime value or a better cycle value, then that becomes something that you elevate in terms of priority. In other words, said simply, the customer was willing to make a decision on screen size, storage, and processing. But by elevating the importance of battery life, now that is taken into consideration when the customer makes a decision. Think about your product or service. Is there something that you offer that the customer understands its, its importance but doesn't give it high enough priority? And if they don't, your job is to elevate that priority. That was strategy number three. Strategy number four. This one's interesting because it goes against the grain. Minimize. Now, sometimes you don't have something that your competitor offers. There's a certain feature that you don't have, certain functionality that you don't have. Let's use the battery again. Let's say that your battery life is, let's say about one hour less than your competitor. So let's say on average, everybody says, look, our batteries last eight hours, but your battery only lasts seven hours. Now, what you have to do, because it's a disadvantage, you have to almost go opposite to elevate. You have to minimize the importance of having an extra hour of battery life. Now, there's several strategies you can deploy. And again, these are just hypotheticals, but I could argue with my client, so to speak. It says, look, they may have battery life that's a little longer, but after a year, that battery life pretty much shrinks to basically where we're at right now, seven. In other words, today they're marketing 
a new battery at eight hours, but within one year, it's gonna be down to seven just like ours. You can make that argument. And I know it's a weak argument, but I'm just giving you an example. Or, again, they're not traveling a lot. They're always near an outlet, so you know what? Battery life isn't really that important because you're always near a plug because you don't travel that much. That's a way of minimizing a disadvantage you have. So let me repeat the four strategies. One, insert something the customer hasn't considered. Number two, highlight something that you offer that maybe your competitors don't offer. Number three, elevate something in priority. In other words, the customer doesn't give it priority, you need to elevate that, give it more importance. And lastly, when you're at a disadvantage, maybe you want to minimize the importance of that disadvantage and have the customer focus on your strengths and not that one weakness. And that is it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spotify, Pandora, wherever you find me. Love to get your feedback. Also, check out the Sales Velocity Academy. If you want to learn how to sell more faster, go to salesvelocityacademy.com. And on that note, this is Victor Antonio, always around you. Selling hard when you know how. Take care. Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.